Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. It's a beautiful kind of fall day. We're starting to see some, uh, some colors change out here. And uh, I have something special and uh, a little unique for you today. Uh, the folks over at iDry, they make vacuum kilns. I reached out and asked if I want to do a feature or a highlight on one of their owners. So today we're going to visit Matt Rubin and he's going to uh, tell us about his journey of how he got from the beginning to where he is now. Matt does custom song, drawing, and uh, furniture. So the whole spectrum of things. So we're going to see how that all progressed. We're going to check out his vacuum kiln and see how that kind of works. And uh, he's actually loading it today. So I'm bringing over some, uh, some slabs. This is the silver maple with a hole. <laughs> and uh, we're going to dry some of this to kind of fill out his, uh, his load, which is going to go in there. So let's, uh, let's head over there now. It's actually not that far. Matt's only about 15 miles south of me. So I have been actually meaning to go visit him for a long time. So this is, this is perfect. <laughs> let's go for a drive. All right, so to the other end of the county, <laughs> I'm here with Matt. Matt, thanks for having us today. Appreciate it's you coming really, out. Really nice of you to make the time to show us around and humor me with all the giddiness I'm going to have looking around all your <laughs> <Right>. toys. <laughs> yep. So I want you to tell us about like, who you are and uh, what you do. Yeah, my name's Matt Rubin. Uh, we're here in Denmark Township, Minnesota, which is kind of where the St. Croix and Mississippi meet. And uh, Three years ago, I started a sawmill business from scratch. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today and see where the business is at. So I do portable milling, um, custom projects, uh, and then I have a vacuum kiln for my dry. So that's kind of the, the main thing of the business is, is selling slabs, projects, and, and milling for people. So I guess we'll just talk about that and, and look around, right? Yeah. So, you, so you're basically you're doing like the whole, the whole thing. The whole thing from <laughs> tree to whatever. That's really cool. So how did you get started with this? Like, uh, what made you say like, oh, I should start like doing stuff with logs and trees and stuff? Yeah, I, I wanted to start a business. So we have a five acre hobby farm here. It's all old buildings and we have an old house that we are think we think we're going to fix it up. But um, so I had this thought of, well, OK, I need to start a business to get some extra income for my family and all these projects that I want to do. I thought about selling chickens. I thought about doing a Christmas tree farm. And then one day I was on YouTube and found a one-man sawmill operation uh, with Nathan of Out of the Woods and just started watching his videos. And I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. So I didn't, I'd never sawed a log before. I'd taken woodworking class in high school. I, and at the time when I bought my sawmill, the only other tool I had for woodworking was a, a Bosch jigsaw and a really crappy table saw that has now been junked. So what, what sawmill did you buy to start with? I bought the Woodmiser LT40. Okay, um, so you, you like got like a real one. Yeah, yeah. My wife said get a good one, otherwise <laughs> it's not going to be worth it. That's a good answer. Yeah, so she, she helped me with that a lot. She said she just said go for it, so that's how it started. Then did you have any way to like uh, get logs, or how were you doing that? Or that happened before? Did you like find a bunch of logs first and be like, I got to cut these things? Or do you get a sawmill first and then go find logs? Like I said, I just jumped in. So I got the sawmill first. <laughs> Didn't have a single log. The first piece of wood that I ever cut was off a branch on my tree over there by the sawmill. And after that, I started cutting down some of my dead trees on my property. The, I'd never cut down a tree before. So I had to go back on YouTube to figure that out. Um, the, first, the first big tree I cut down was about 30 feet from my house. And I said, okay, well, if it falls on the house, no big deal. <laughs> so I cut it down. I landed it where, I, where it should have went. But uh, that's, that's how that started. And then I just spent the entire summer of 2018 collecting logs and finding people that would get me logs. So, so it's been, what, three years? Three years. A little over three years. Okay. Yeah. That's quite impressive to come yep. that far in three years. Yeah, and it was all just on a whim and then just kind of winging it as I go and then uh, part time. So um, for three years, I was just kind of doing whatever I could in the spare time that I had to get things in place. Yeah. So then you just went to be full time three, three months ago? Three months ago. Yeah. So tell us about that jump. How did that feel? Uh, how'd yeah. Go? Going full time. It was a thought that I had actually exactly one year ago. Um, the reason for that one year ago, in October, I had probably the, the best sales month that I've had up until now. 
And that's when I thought, okay, now I think I can actually do this full time and be sustainable because of all the equipment that I had. The only missing piece was having the, the big router table, which I got in, in June of this year. So once I got that in place, it was pretty much just, I, I just had a feeling one day when I went into work that that was gonna be the day to quit. And the funny thing is my boss asked me that day, how's, how's business going? I said, it's going really good, um, but I can't keep up. And then two hours later, I went into his office and said, I'm sorry, but I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I mean, I knew it was coming. It, just, it was just a matter of time and I could just feel it building up inside. Like it was, it was pretty, pretty rough to, to know that you can do it on your own, but you're kind of just, you're not quite sure if it's the right decision, but it has been so far and it's been awesome for these first three months. All right, so let's go on a tour. So when I first started collecting logs, all the logs would get dumped in the driveway. I didn't have the skid steer, which I now have for two years. So I would collect logs, dump them in the driveway, and then chain them and drag them to the mill and roll them up on the mill, however, however way I could do it. So that's how that started. It's been all cleaned up now. If you come this way, we've got all these different buildings. There's like 11 different buildings on this property. None of them are in great shape, but we're working with it. So this actually used to be an old pig barn from what I found out from the previous owners. And this is my current workshop. It's not very big, um, but I've got enough space to do some projects. I've got pretty much all the tools in here that I can, I can handle. So it's about 13 foot wide and 30 foot long. And so I have the biggest piece of machinery in here is the 25 inch helical head planer, which has been awesome for me. And uh, that's my way of planing slabs for customers to get them ready. So I sold a lot of wood just out of this little tiny shop. It used to be stacks and stacks of wood in here and this is where I'd have my sales, especially in the winter because I can heat it with the old stove that we have from the house. So that's kind of the origin story on how that worked. So for now, I'm trying to keep every, all the wood out and have it in other shops, other sheds to keep this more of a work area. So that's that. The next funny story is this solar kiln that I started building exactly three years ago in October. Um, this is when I first started selling wood. It was, I'd sell it wet. I'd have to tell people that, of course. And I'm like, I got to figure out a way to dry wood. And I just started the business. So I started building this kiln. And about a month later, after I had got it to this state, I found eye dry and I said, okay, I don't want that. I want an eye dry. So for three years, it has just been like a, a storage shelter. We thought about converting it into a greenhouse, but it's getting taken down very soon. So that's the story on that. So then over here, this is my sawmill shed and I've done some modifications just to this. It's just an old 30, 36 by 24 shed. I took down the wall on the far side to have logs come into the sawmill. So that used to be a wall. And there also used to be a wall on the front here. So that was all torn down. And that's where the sawmill sits. That's where I mill everything. And then if you come inside, so sawmill on one end, I got a little storage bay in the middle. And then on the, the left side here is my big slab flattening machine from Black Horse Designs. And this was a piece of equipment that kind of set me into going full time. I had all these nice big slabs dried, but I didn't have a way to plane them. And I wanted to start doing custom projects, dining tables, whatever else. And this was the machine that got me to being full time. So um, it's, it barely fits in here, but it, it's, <laughs> it's pretty big. It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty big. It's 17 feet long and 70 inches wide. Um, it's almost like Josh made it just for this space. It's, <laughs> it's not a whole lot of extra room around it. No. So I play in the slabs that go up on the wall and that's, that's how I sell my stock right now. Um, I don't have a lot of stock right now. It's, it's been going pretty fast. Um, but this is kind of how I'm at right now with, with selling slabs and getting customers to, to pick out projects from them. So every single log that I saw for myself I have gone out and got myself. I've not had a single person drop off a log for me. I've had people deliver logs for their milling purposes, but everything that I've sought up has been me going out and getting it. So as we go back here, oh, I've yeah, got, got a lot of buildings back here too. Huh? I've got a lot of other stuff. Um, that building is almost exclusively used just to park the Bobcat. That's the watchdog. This old building used to be a dog, a dog house. 
Uh, in there, I've got some nice walnut cookies uh, air drying. You got to get a shot of that. Yeah, that's an old chicken coop. Oh yeah, there's three of them. There's three of them, <laughs> yep. I thought it was gonna be full. <laughs> no, not yet, they all sell fast. So a lot of this has just been getting logs and getting, them, getting an inventory of logs here so again, I can feel comfortable of having enough just in process stock to, to keep the business going. That whole pile is walnut. Um, this is a pile for some customers to saw. This is a pile of black locust over here to my right. That's for a customer. Those are straight. Nice straight black locust, yeah. Uh, this is all red oak, I believe. And that's kind of a pile of random logs that I've collected that I'll probably never get to. <laughs> I think a lot of, we all have those. Piles. Yeah. Yeah. There might be some good ones in there still. I got some hackberry. This is a hackberry from the storm that came through a couple of weeks ago. These are always so cool. Like the bark on these things is yeah. so like I unique. Could, I'll I, say unique. I drove by it a few times and then the owner actually called me without me actually. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I knew from the street as I was driving by that was a hackberry. So we're going to let this one sit and spalt for a couple of years, I believe. That'll be cool. And um, we're, we're hoping for some really awesome spalting in that log. So yeah, just keep moving back here. We got some random pine logs that I've collected. Some of these logs I've pulled out of burning piles. Like, <laughs> yeah. Got some poplar logs over here from the neighbor. Some more white oak. And just, just, just some more random logs. And then that's it for the, the log inventory. So well, you got a lot of logs. I got lots of room to put them too. So that's nice. Oh yeah. And they're shaded. Which is, that's nice. Yeah. And yeah, my pile is not. And it's super annoying. Yeah. yeah. So is this the same saw you had bought three years ago? Yeah, this is the same saw. Um, if you come this way, I'll show you what I did to it. So this was an originally a standard LT40 with a 28 inch cut width max. And I said that wasn't good enough. So I saw uh, Canadian Woodworks, they had modified their mill to make it extendable. And I said, hmm, that's a really good idea. So I mentioned it to a few local customers of mine who happened to be woodworkers. And they knew a guy just down the road about a mile and a half. And he said, you got to go see Charlie Brown. So he's a third generation welder. And I said, hey, can you make this wider? And he looked at it. He goes, oh, yeah, no problem, 300 bucks. <laughs> I'm like, OK. <laughs> so he cut the mill right here, added in a 10, 10 inch extension roughly. So I can cut 37 inches wide now. That's awesome. And I can still uh, trailer it. We modified this to go a little wider for the oh, trailering yeah. stop. Yeah. Yeah, you'd never know that uh, he did any work on it. It's never had a problem since he's done it. Um, never had to make any sort of adjustment. Um, so if you know a really good welder and you have a mill that you want wider, a wood miser, I would recommend it. It's not that crazy. Just a piece of steel welded in. And I don't know if I'll keep this forever. I might, I might want to upgrade in the future, maybe get uh, an electric one once I have a nice shop and stay, just stay here. Uh, but I do get a lot of portable requests, so it'd be tough to let that go. So with portable milling, how often do you do that? And how does that typically work for people? Because a lot of, I get a lot of questions about, you know, how do I find someone to come out and cut my logs for me if I have a tree that came down or whatever? So what's the best, I guess, I don't even know what I'm asking other than like walk me through the process of how someone finds you and what it's like to go up there and saw for them. Yeah, so most of the time people have never had a Sawyer come out. They have no idea what the process is. They have no idea what they can do with the, the tree or the log. Um, so I kind of have to educate them on, you know, what's possible based on what they have. And um, then we have to figure out, I, I try to figure out a drying plan for them. I can't dry for people because I don't have the capacity, but I try to make them understand that that is part of the process. Um, so it's not just cutting the logs for them, it's really just educating them about the entire process. But I'll go out on site um, probably two or three times a week during the summer, during the busy season. Um, and most of, the, most of the times, it's just a few logs for people. So I do have a three hour minimum, and then I charge for mileage. But um, it, people are just usually really happy to use the trees that they had in their yard. And I was actually just down in Iowa last week when I milled a five foot oak log. Um, on this it a, thing? It was a, on this thing. <laughs> five foot oak log, 34 inches wide. Once the log was on the mill, it was 15 minutes of milling and I drove eight hours and they were the happiest customers I've ever had. So 
I, it's kind of funny how that aspect of the business works out, but uh, it's been kind of fun to just get out on the road and meet people like that. So that's where I'm at with that. That's really cool. So like a lot of the education side of it, that's kind of interesting because I guess when people will reach out to you, they don't really understand like, oh, I got to sticker it. I got to stack it nicely. And right. they're like, oh, I just turned this tree into something. Yep. But there's a lot more. That Most people goes. are honestly very much surprised that they have to dry it. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. Or the time that it takes to air dry it if that's their route. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, it's 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 fun to talk about it and just understand understand people's perspective on that. So yeah, that's really cool. So the most important part of the business, like I just said, is drying. So I thought about solar drying and thought that was never going to be good enough for the demand I was seeing. So that's back in 2018, the end of 2018, I decided I wanted an eye dry, but at the time I wouldn't get financed for it. So I had to wait another year. And this thing came last year. Uh, I went out to Vermont to pick it up myself. So we'll just open up the doors and see what's inside. So this is a 40 foot shipping container. It's a high, so it's nine feet high. And then I insulate it all the way around the kiln space so that in the winter it doesn't freeze up. And it's a little bit more efficient that way. So voila, here we go. So it's a box inside of a box. It's a box inside of a box. It's a hot box. So yeah, well, that's the front of the kiln. Uh, when we take it out, it's on a trolley, but I'll show you the back side of it too. So we're, we cut a little hole here. I still got to put a door in, but same thing. It's, it's kind of just hot box. I got two inch foam everywhere. So this is uh, all electric. Electric line comes in from the, the well house, which is right next door. And then the water line comes in the bottom. And there's the vacuum pump. And that's, uh, that's how everything runs off of, the, off of the control panel here. So right now, this, this charge has been in here for a little over a week. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to decompress the vacuum. So we're just going to hit vacuum release. We got, we got some wood to put in there. So this process of releasing the vacuum and draining the kiln is about 15 to 20 minutes. Maybe we should check out the water release. Oh, fun. Yeah, we, we can't miss that. This is all the water that came out? Uh, the big one is the vacuum pump water. The green bucket is for the daily discharge. So I get to kind of monitor how much comes out. When it starts to be a trickle, I know that the load's probably getting close. Oh, sure. That's a good way to kind of indicate how much water is coming out of the wood, right? Yeah, so like on a full charge, wet wood, I'm willing to bet we're getting like 10, 15 gallons a day right away <laughs> that come out. I don't think people understand how much water is inside of wood. Tremendous amount. So this is kind of like the, the winter water, watering hole for all the chickens and ducks. They like to, to come over here during the winter and drink the warm water. <laughs> Works out good. Oh, that's a lot of water. So this is all since when? This is from last night at six. So like 18 hours? 18 hours, yeah. All out of the wood? Yep. Okay, we've got some maple for Duck Hill Sawmill. We've got this Those really are cool. awesome burl for Denali Woodworks. And then this whole stack is all mine charcuterie board stock. This is a big seller in the fall time, so I had to get this load through. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's check the, the moisture on these maple burls. We gotta get that. That sounds crazy. Yeah. We're really hoping this is dry. We want to change this load out today, but I think if, if these aren't dry, we'll find a way to get them in the next load. Nine, 10, I'd say we're pretty good. I wouldn't want to go too much lower with those. It looks like they dried pretty nice too. I don't yeah, see any major cracks anywhere. These, I think they came in at like 25% moisture roughly. And how long have they been in for? Seven days. 
That's pretty good. First day is pretty much a wasted day, so it's just ramp up time. Yeah. And then today is like half a day because we didn't have the full full day, so more like actual five days of drying. We're gonna pull this out. That'll be good to go. That's gonna need some more time. I already know that. That was fresh cut. Um, but then these will be good to to get in the inventory too. So time to unload. It's holding. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> that works. It's, well, it's it's closer so close. now. So that was our excitement for the day. We're gonna get a a moisture reading on these before they go in. <laughs> then we'll start throwing them in there. So I'd say anywhere from 14 to 20, somewhere in that range okay. on the wetter stuff. showing off. Yep. Smallest slab in the stack. <laughs> Here, I'll throw it up there. <laughs> Perfect. Good landing. Yeah. Are you satisfied? I'm very satisfied. Me too. That's awesome. Let's push it in. Snug. Uh, as far as drying time, like this maple, I think you have will be like four or five days to get it dry. That's I'm gonna, good. I'm gonna keep it in there longer just because they I don't want to take it out. get that big stuff in there anyway. Yeah, so it'll actually equalize a little bit, and who knows, it might take longer, but. Um, and then like the, the cost to run the kiln, it's electric, it's, uh, but between the summer and winter, it's four to 500, somewhere in that range. Per month or how many per, per month? Mode? Per, per month. month. So if you can get anywhere from two to 4,000 board feet through yeah. it in a month, 
it's that's really, not bad. really not much at all. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's, it's quick. It's quick. It's not bad. Yeah. Loading and unloading is pretty easy. So we'll be back and whenever you let me know and we'll see how everything looks, I guess. Yep. So thanks for showing us around today. Yep. And we'll see you in like a week-ish yeah, or so. Yeah, a week or so. Yeah. Maybe a little bit cooler. We'll see. Yeah. It's still a little warm. Might be for... snowing by then. <laughs> it probably will be. <laughs> Mid-October snowfall. So one of the awesome things about the vacuum kilns is that they're able to dry things a lot faster than any type of conventional way of drying with, uh, with air. So a conventional kiln, DH kiln, or like a solar kiln, even just air drying, those have a certain speed limit that you really can't exceed or else you'll degrade the quality of the wood. With the vacuum kilns, you can go quite a bit faster without any kind of degradation because of the magic of lowering that boiling point. So my slabs will probably be done in a few days. So we're gonna head over there next week and unload and uh, take a look at those. Uh, this was too big for Matt's saw. <laughs> so uh, it came home with me. <laughs> It's a big uh, walnut crotch log, which we'll cut in the future. But for now, I will see you uh, next week sometime back at Matt's place. All right, so I'm back. It's been a little longer than I had hoped because I've been tearing apart my house. So there's there's that. So these have been out for like two or three weeks now? Two or three weeks they've been sitting outside, yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna take a quick look at the moisture content and uh, see where things are at. Uh, with this cycle, because you were trying to get some moisture out of this big thick stuff, we weren't trying to like go super crazy. Right. I'm pulling all the moisture out of here just to kind of bring them down to a little more indoorish level. Yeah. So. What'd you end up running for four, uh, four weeks? Is that what that's like? A little like over four weeks, yeah. Right, and you had a lot of moisture in these big chunk, big chunky things. Yeah, it that's... was about uh, 10 gallons coming out in the first couple of days. And then <laughs> towards the end, there was just a very small trickle, almost nothing in the last few days. So that's when I knew when to pull the load out. Should you maybe bottle that? And like... uh, I've heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> Wood water, Yep. the newest thing. All right, so what we got? Oh, we're down around six, 7%, which is, Pretty good for this time of year, as we jump into the dry winter months. So yeah, pretty consistent, six to seven. So no, last time we talked a bit about the, I guess the business side of having, you know, the kiln and how it's impacted things. And I think the, the gist of it is that it's really allowed you to, you know, produce product quicker or get things out the door quicker because your dry time goes down, but you're not sacrificing, you know, a quality drying quality right because it's faster the, the magic of the vacuum right so I guess would you would you do it again would you do something differently with the setup or right away I found out that once I had kiln dried wood that I would need more capacity so I actually wish I would have bought the bigger model of the eye dry <laughs> um, but I didn't I didn't I didn't really know at the time and I, I wanted to buy some other equipment along with the eye dry so it was kind of just like a I don't want to spend that much that 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 soon, but uh, you know, a few months of, of having the eye dry, I was like, okay, I wish I've, I would have more capacity. Right. So. so I guess the payback on it is pretty, you know, quick or reasonable, depending on how much volume you do. I guess. Yeah, it all depends on how much volume you want to do. So, like for me, it's 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 almost tough to keep up with the demand. I mean, towards the middle of this past summer, I was. I was basically pre-selling slabs wet, so people would come over wanting something. Um, I wouldn't have it dry, but I'd already have it cut. Yep. And they would pick out that slab, and then I'd say, okay, well, I'll get it in the kiln when I can. Sure. And kind of work that way. So I actually pre-sold a lot of my inventory over the course of the summer, and I'm now actually getting it dry and, and out the <laughs> door. So it helps with that, too. So you can, you can do things a little bit faster that way, too, and you can uh, increase your cash flow right away you know, by selling half, half of the slab really, you know, half down early. So a lot of different ways to work it, but um, 
yeah, ultimately, I just wish I had more volume. <laughs> it sounds like the uh, the volume kind of matches whatever capacity you have. Yeah. So it doesn't even matter. Like, if you had a bigger one, you'd probably still want another one. Probably. <laughs> yep. And at that point, I might actually want to hire somebody. But yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Matt, for taking the time and showing us around, and telling us about your business. I know I really enjoyed hearing about it all, and I get to geek out and see what everybody else is doing out in the world. So yeah. thank you again for taking the time to show everything and being so open with everything. Yeah, no problem. There's, if anybody has any questions, they can always reach out to me too. Thank you. And also a big thank you to iDrive for making this possible. If you want to check out their kilns and learn more about their stuff, you can check out their website. I'll have a link to that down in the video description. And uh, I think that's going to do it for this one. All right. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about Matt's sawmill operation, you can bother him. Don't go to him. <laughs> Please feel free to leave a comment and we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working.